Bali is amazing, but no place is perfect and social media has a tendency perhaps to highlight mainly the good things. So here are four things I hate, but also four things I love about Bali, Indonesia. The first thing I love about Bali is all the experiences that you can have. Bali is not a huge island, but it's quite diverse and you can do so many different things depending on what you're into. You can go to an amazing beach in the morning, drive to a waterfall a few hours later, have lunch by the rice terraces, go hike a volcano, have a surf lesson or a yoga lesson, and then maybe even witness a local ceremony going on, if you have the energy for all that. My point is, if you are going to, let's say, the Maldives, I mean, you're going for the water and for the beaches. And Bali really offers a lot of different experiences and all within a pretty short distance of each other. And I also want to highlight the culture here. I think the unique culture and religion in Bali and how the locals are very good at holding on to it is a big part of what makes me love Bali, the people here and all the experiences even more. I actually planned on making this point more about the Balinese people and all the great experiences I've had with local Balinese people and just how friendly they all are. But I feel like every video you watch or blog post you read about any place or any country, the foreigner making it will say, ah, these are the friendliest people I have ever met in the whole world. So I don't know, it just rings a little bit hollow, but the fact is the people in Bali are super friendly and always very helpful. The first thing I hate about Bali is the traffic. And I mean, using the word hate about these things is perhaps a bit harsh, but I hope you catch my meaning. But the traffic, the infrastructure here in Bali, in most places, is simply not set up for the amount of people who come here. At least not in most of the places that are very popular with tourists like Kuta, Chengdu, Seminyak and Ubud. And I mean, let's be honest, if you're coming here as a tourist, these are probably some of the places that you'll go. Although in my other videos I have made about Bali, which you can find down in the description, I really try to make the case that you should try to get outside of these very popular places and go explore everything else Bali has to offer. And yes, traffic does play a part in that recommendation. In most other parts of Bali that I've been to, so outside these very touristy places, the traffic is totally fine. But in the touristy areas, a 20 minute ride can easily take an hour and you can often find yourself just completely stuck in traffic. Stay outside the popular areas if you want to avoid this. Now the second thing I love about Bali is the hotels and villas. Before I went to Bali for the first time, the image that I had in my mind was just me staying in a beautiful villa with my own private pool, which is something I had never tried before. And let me just tell you, here Bali really lives up to the hype. There are so many beautiful and incredible hotels and villas all around Bali, and many are also very reasonably priced or some are even downright cheap for a tourist. Like this villa here in northern Bali, which is one of my favorites, called Sangklung Villas, I think. It's this huge villa with a large pool and just the most amazing view, and it costs something around 70 US dollars per night. Staying in places like this is really an experience in itself, and I mean, it's something that I would never be able to do back in, in Europe. The second thing I hate is the expectation or perhaps the perception of Bali. So I mentioned in the beginning how social media has a tendency to focus and highlight like the great things about a place and Bali is really no exception here. I think you could even argue that social media has played quite a big part in bringing even more tourists and making the place even more popular. But quite a lot of people then come to Bali and get a bit underwhelmed and even disappointed with their experience. And I think that's mostly because they have set their expectations just very high due to perhaps a lot of the content that they have been watching and then their experience doesn't quite match that. Like you'll see this video of a person standing all alone at an amazing waterfall and it just looks so dreamy. Then you go there yourself and it's nothing like the video. It's completely full of people and all the colors of the water and the plants just don't really pop that much and everything is a little bit brown and perhaps dirty. And I know because I sometimes make these type of videos myself and the reality is if you want places like this 
alone you have to get up for sunrise at like 5 a.m or 6 a.m and then you can of course also edit the photos and the videos to make them look a little bit better and if this is the type of content that a person only sees about bali it will be very difficult to live up to that expectation when you actually go on the trip because bali is a real place not some instagram photo it is chaotic there are a lot of tourists there's sometimes trash on the streets or on the beach of course a place doesn't have to appeal to everyone and not everyone will like all the same things but i think a lot of people who have a negative experience in bali could have had a much better one if they perhaps had more realistic expectations going into it. The third thing I love about Bali is this feeling of freedom that I get. This one is probably a little less tangible than some of the others as it's really more of a certain feeling that I get when I am in Bali. But perhaps the best way I can explain it is with kind of this image. So imagine you're driving on a scooter down an empty road with nothing but rice fields and palm trees all around you and you're just vibing. It's that feeling. But I guess it also comes back to the experience part again. So having that freedom to be able to do just, well, almost anything, as well as having a pretty strong sense of safety, Bali feels and probably is really a safe place to be as a tourist. And the last part that goes kind of into this freedom feeling is perhaps how it stands in contrast to where I'm from in Denmark. In Denmark, there are rules and laws about everything. And sometimes it just feels very controlling and restrictive, I guess. Like you can't do this or you can't do that and you have to do this thing in exactly this way or you will be fined or whatever. Now, of course, Indonesia has rules and laws as well, but at least in contrast to Denmark and of course the things that apply to me as a foreigner, it doesn't feel as controlling. Using the scooter as an example again, if traffic is backed up, you just go around all the cars with your scooter or up on the sidewalk or whatever and you'll often see locals who are like two adults and three kids on a single scooter <laughs> and I really like that. Not everyone will but for me that's a great part about Bali. The third thing I hate is the over tourism or at least some of the consequences of it. As someone who has been a tourist in Bali several times, I don't really think that I can complain about other tourists. But as has happened with many other places around the world, when a place becomes really popular with tourists, some problems comes with it. Like many beautiful places, waterfalls or temples have just become tourist traps. In some areas there are issues with waste management, trash, pollution, and there's also construction going on everywhere it seems. And in some of the places that are popular with tourists, it almost doesn't really feel like you're in Bali anymore. Everything is like in western style. A western hotel, a western restaurant, western shop, and all the other people you see around are other tourists. Now the sharp viewer out there can perhaps come to the conclusions that a lot of my negative can be avoided simply by going outside the popular areas. And that is also one of my main tips in my huge Bali travel guide video which you could watch after this one, where of course I also share which places you should visit outside the main touristy ones. fourth thing I love is the value for money. The amazing hotels, great food and awesome experiences are all quite affordable for, well, at least someone like me who is traveling to Bali with my Western money. So even though I am very much a budget traveler, I can afford a little bit of luxury when in Bali and I am able to treat myself just a little bit more. And if I eat mainly local food and stay in more budget homestay options, I can really make my budget go a very long way. The fourth and last thing I hate about Bali is the rude tourists. Now, just a few moments ago, I said how I couldn't really complain about other tourists when I'm a tourist myself, but I will allow myself to complain about the rude and just the bad tourists. Because I guess the other side of that affordability coin is that it also attracts people who are just there to take advantage of the cheap booze, party hard and not really care about anything else. And especially after COVID, there has been quite a lot of problems in Bali with, well, a lot of rude and bad tourists. 
And I mean, it's those tourists who drive drunk and cause accidents. Those who are just rude and annoying to everyone, especially to the locals. And those who don't respect the local customs, rules, laws and culture. And compared to many of the other places I have traveled to, there just seems to be a quite large concentration of these rude tourists in Bali, unfortunately. Now, if you want to know perhaps how to avoid some of these negatives, you should watch this video right here. This is a huge Bali travel guide that will tell you all the great places to go, how much money it will cost you, where you should stay and so much more.